Well, good morning, Beaver Dam. It's Pastor Owen coming to you live from Beaver Dam and Rousey's Chapel, and you are joining us for our time of reflections. Today is uh, Thursday, May the 6th, and uh, it's a beautiful, cool morning here in Beaver Dam, and the day looks like it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. If you happen to be joining us live this morning or throughout the day, drop us a line in the comment box. It's a great way to, uh, for us to stay connected. And I would always love to hear your thoughts on the topic of the day. Good morning, Denise. Glad to see you're joining us this morning. So uh, we have been using the revised Common Lectionary Daily Readings. And uh, we've got a couple of good readings for, for us today, uh, which, is, which is a good and glorious thing. Um, so uh, before we delve into the text this morning, uh, let's spend a few minutes practicing our spiritual discipline of breath prayer. And just as a, a reminder, breath prayer is one of those disciplines where we breathe in something of God and we breathe out something of ourselves. Good morning, Loretta. Glad to see you're joining us. I see Karen's jumping on this morning. People slowly getting slowly getting moving this morning. Um, so our breath prayer this morning is we're breathing in God's care and we're breathing out our doubt. So we'll breathe in God's care and breathe out our doubt. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Let us pray. Breathe in God's care. Hold it there for a second and breathe out our doubt. Breathe in God's care and breathe out our doubt. Breathe in God's care and breathe out our doubt. Breathe in God's care and breathe out our doubt. Focus on your breathing. Breathe in God's care and breathe out our doubt. Breathe in God's care and breathe out our doubt. One more time, breathe in God's care and breathe out our doubt. Amen, amen. I, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I really enjoy the breath prayer. It's a great way to 
to refocus and to uh, and just to to spend some time with God. Very very relaxing. So um, our readings today come from the from the Psalms and from the Book of Acts. Our first reading this morning comes from Acts 98 verses 1 through 3. And uh, I'm reading from the Common English Bible this morning. Sing to the Lord a new song, because he has done wonderful things. His own strong hand and his own holy arm have won the victory. The Lord has made his salvation widely known. Widely known. He has revealed his righteousness in the eyes of all the nations. God has remained his remembered his loyal love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. Every corner of the earth has seen our God's salvation. And then our, our next reading this morning comes from Acts chapter 10, verses 1 through 34. And uh, this morning I thought I'd switch it up a little bit, and, and I'm reading from the message, which is uh, a paraphrase of the biblical text. And this section is entitled, Paul's Vision. There was a man named Cornelius who lived in Sisera, captain of, the, captain of the Italian guard stationed there. He was thoroughly a thoroughly good man, and he led everyone in his house to live worshipfully before God, was always helping people in need, and had the habit of prayer. One day, about three o'clock in the afternoon, he had a vision. An angel of God, as real as the next door neighbor, came in and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared hard, wondering if he was seeing things. Then he said, what do you want, sir? The angel said, your prayers and neighborly acts have brought you to God's attention. Here's what you are here is what you are, are what you are to do send men to joppa to get simon the one everyone calls peter he is staying with simon the tanner whose house is down by the sea as soon as the angel was gone cornelius called two servants and one partially devout soldier from the guard a particularly devout <laughs> soldier from the guard he went over with them in great deal detail everything that had just happened, and then he sent them off to Joppa. The next day, as the three travelers were approaching town, Peter went out on the balcony to pray. It was about noon. Peter got hungry and started thinking about lunch. While lunch was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the skies open up. Something that looked like a huge blanket lowered by ropes at all of its four corners settled on the ground. Every kind of animal and reptile and bird you could think of was on it. Then a voice came, go to it, Peter, kill and eat. Peter said, oh no, Lord, I've never so much as tasted food that was not kosher. The voice came a second time. If God says it's okay, it's okay. This happened three times, and then the blanket was pulled back up into the skies. As Peter, puzzled, sat there trying to figure out what it all meant, the men sent by Cornelius showed up at Simon's front door. They called in asking if there was a Simon, also called Peter, staying there. Peter, lost in thought, didn't hear them. So the spirit whispered to him, three men are knocking at the door looking for you. Go down there and go with them. Don't ask any questions. I sent them to get you. Peter went down and said to the men, I think I'm the man you're looking for. What's up? They said, Captain Cornelius, a God-fearing man, well known for his fair, fair play, Asked any, Joe, asked any Jew in that part of the country, was commanded by the holy angel to get you and to bring you to his house so he could hear what you had to say. Peter invited them in 
and, them, and made them feel at home. The next morning, he got up and went with them. Some of, his, some of his friends from Joppa went along. A day later, they entered Sisera. Cornelius was expecting him and had his relatives and close friends waiting with him. The minute, the minute Peter came through the door, Cornelius was up on his feet greeting him and then down on his face worshiping him. Peter pulled him up and said, none of that. I'm a man and only a man, no different from you. Talking things over, they went on into the house where Cornelius introduced Peter to everyone who had come. Peter addressed them. You know, I'm not sure this is highly, you know, let me try that again. You know, I'm sure that this is highly irregular. Jews don't do this. Visit and relax people, relax with people of another race. But God has shown me that there is no race better than any other. So the minute I was sent for, I came, no questions asked. But now I'd like to know why you sent for me. Cornelius said, four days ago, about this time mid-afternoon, I was home praying. Suddenly there was a man right in front of me, flooding the room with light. He said, Cornelius, your daily prayers and neighborly acts have brought you to God's attention. I want you to, I want you to send to Joppa to get Simon, the one they call Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner by the sea. So I did it. I sent for you, and you've been good enough to come. And now we're all here in God's presence, ready to listen to whatever the master put in your heart to tell us. Peter fairly exploded with, this, with his good news. This is God's own truth. Nothing can be plainer. God plays no favorites. It makes no difference who you are or where you're from. If you want God and are ready to do to do as he says, the door is open. Well, friends, that was a little longer reading than what we normally have this morning, uh, but a good one, I, I think. So uh, we've been working our way through our Wesley study notes. So let's delve into some study notes this morning. Uh, the ones for this first part of chapter 10 read this way. The conversation of Cornelius is significant is a significant turning point in Acts. As a centurion, Cornelius is a Roman citizen and a commander of 100 soldier, soldiers. As a Gentile, he worships God, but is not a convert to Judaism. Both Cornelius's act of praying and the vision of an angel makes God's direction clear. Cornelius prompts actions, signals obedience. A vision comes to a praying Peter similar to that of Cornelius. <clears throat> the sheet descending descent from heaven suggests its divine source. The various life forms probably represent all creatures. Pious jo Jews would identify reptiles and birds as unclean. Peter's resistance to the command to eat is consistent with the Jewish custom, yet the second divine pronouncement corrects him. The repetition emphasizes Peter's difficulty in understanding the vision and God's initiative in overcoming resistance. While lacking understanding, Peter receives further instructions from the Spirit regarding Cornelius' party, who is present and he doesn't notice. The message from those delegates uh, corresponds to the Spirit's instructions. Peter demonstrates hospitalities towards these Gentile individuals, suggests acceptance of persons considered outsiders, which is remarkable given his confusion over the vision. So, uh, just some, some good notes this morning. Ooh, lots of reading. Mm. You know, as, as part of uh, my preparing each day for our time together, I usually read a couple of short commentaries on the text for today. 
And the one that I read today is from a website called Working Preacher. And I thought it had a good message on the text for us to, for on the, the had a good message uh, today on the text. It read, it seems natural to read Acts 10 as a story about Peter's conversion and transformation. But when we read it in the context of the 21st century church, the narrative summons both laity and clergy to a conversion of heart, soul, and mind. Like Peter, 21st century Christians seem to have difficulties welcoming and accepting outsiders into the fellowship of God. Simply put, Acts 10 is a challenging but fascinating message to all who claim to be serving God and all who are part of the church. Our accepting of others is indeed a form of witnessing to the good news of Jesus Christ. I really thought that was, uh, that kind of spoke well and sum the, summarized the text very well this morning. And after reading, after reading that uh, particular commentary, I started to think about how I am, how I am doing at accepting people who are different than me when I first encounter them. Do I really see them as children of God? And I think I have to admit that there have been times when I've fallen well short of being welcoming and accepting. Something I need to continue to work on. Work on. Then my mind went to how are we doing as the body of Christ in the congregations here in Beaverdam and Rousey's Chapel in welcoming and accepting the stranger. Do we fool ourselves by saying, yes, of course we show good hospitality. We're friendly and open and accepting, but are we really? Are we really as open and open and accepting to those we don't know and who are different from us? Just something to reflect upon on this Thursday. How are we doing at being welcoming the stranger? Well, friends, uh, tomorrow we'll gather again for Friday. We'll see where, where the lectionary takes us. Uh, but for now, let's close with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, gosh, you've given us another beautiful day, and we are just so thankful. There's a nice, cool crispness in the air that reminds us that uh, spring is still here and that summer is around the corner. God, we just thank you for all of the blessings that you can continue to pour out upon us. And we ask as always that you continue to inspire and guide us. Inspire and guide us, especially in what it means to be welcoming and open to accepting others as your children. God, we ask that you continue to be with us, that you continue to walk with us, and that you wrap your loving arms around us and help us in those places that we're struggling and also celebrate with us in those places that we're celebrating. God, we just continue to thank you over and over again for the gift of your son and the work that he's done for us and how he has showed us how to live. God, we ask for all of these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. Well, friends, uh, remember that today is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Go in peace.